the 80s. I learned to become a nail technician in the 80s, and we did the traditional French pink and white. I think I'd like to revisit. Welcome to the 80s. <laughs> well, this is fun. This is easy for cameraman and I because we lived in the 80s. In the 80s, 80, 1980, I was 16 to 26. And in that time, a lot of things happened for us. I got married. My husband had a business. And I started my nail salon. That's when I discovered nails. And I was just going through some photos. And I just had to laugh at some of these things. Look at this photo. This is in my second salon. I believe this was late 80s. I just want to point out some retro thing. Look at that. That? Oh, wow. You know what that is? It's a Rolodex. It's a Rolodex. Why I think that's funny is because nowadays everything's on computers. And of course, we have the paper. This is how we took the appointments. And of course, on a landline phone. Very, very different. And in that same room, this is the same room. This is my desk that I'm on. And this is the same room, which I decorated. And in that little room is the pedicure room. And it looks like I was doing some more PR photos. And I got a cute little picture of me and my staff member named Carmen. Oh my goodness, this is awesome. Oh, here's the facial room. Adorable. Here's the main room where we had all the nails. It was just one station. Oh, and here's a girlfriend's wedding I went to. <laughs> you know, we make fun of those bridesmaids dresses in the 80s. And there I am wearing it. This leads me to the nails. We did a lot of PR nail shots and I was just looking at this photo. And it's not great because I can't really see the details, but. These are the nails, the French nails in the 80s, and that's what I'm going to do today. It's the nails we used to do in the 80s, and we didn't have a lot of choices. There was no glitter. There was no color. In fact, we only had a couple of colors of acrylic, and that's what we did, pink and whites. And that's what this is, and they're just not so good. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> we didn't have all the tools we have nowadays to make them as good as we do. We couldn't get the crisp line because I'll show you what we did. One thing I also did discover is I found some nail polish. You guys, this polish is actually from the 80s. I found a place that I could private label and you can see the labels on them. <laughs> the little paper labels are horrible, but I got better and I, and I found a company that could do these ones. But how does this polish hold out? Literally, I bought this late 80s. I can't wait to see how they held out after 30 plus years. But right now, I'm going to do some French pink and white square nails, just as we did in the 80s. And I want to show you this. Let's get started. Okay, I have to tell you guys, this is kind of funny, and I wish the cameras were rolling, but me and cameraman were trying to get my big hoop earrings <laughs> in. I haven't worn earrings in a long time, and I used to love wearing the hoop, but we were trying to get it in, and I actually gunked some polish, and he almost passed out. Are you okay, cameraman? No, the gunk polish. We were having to push him From, through. Yeah, because I asked him if he could push it through because I they were too big for you. <laughs> they're too hole. big my yeah, well, yeah my ear little ears are just too small to get it through so the holes in your, the pierced holes were tiny yeah and that, anyway that it stud was thing was thick we and I was, both cannot handle I that kind of thing i thought we were both gonna pass out for a second <laughs> there <laughs> anyway we're we're a couple of babies okay so in the 80s we only had a couple of colors our forms we only had one form to choose from this was the e-file we called it a drill this is the e-file that we used to use back then. I absolutely loved it. I know it looks ridiculous. It's actually a dentist drill, and that's what we, a lot of the stuff is dentist stuff. But I loved it because of the very slender handpiece. You know how I'm always about that. I like it. It was really easy to work with. I didn't, that's why getting used to the e-file with the cord on it and stuff. I mean, I think these things are really great. But yeah, I did get used to it. But you used to have to put a cord around here and feed it all the way through and these pulleys and go around and up through there. I loved doing it. It was kind of fun. But I would be filing away. Just we use all the same bits, which is really handy. But you're filing away. And because our hair was so big, the drill was over here. We used to get it caught in the pulley all the time and it would get wrapped up. And I'd be working and go, bloop, 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 and the client would be like, oh, and, <laughs> and we'd all be sitting there trying to untangle my hair. I'm sure it was every 80s nail technician's problem. Anyway, I loved this drill. It was attached to a foot pedal and I could operate it underneath. Honestly, if I could, I'd still use it. I absolutely love it. But right now I'm going to prep my nails with an e-file. This doesn't even work. If it worked, I would be using it. But I had OPI. I learned on OPI and I love OPI. But I went to get some more products to finish this set with the clear cap. I can't get it. 
this isn't even available anymore. So this was the competition OPI monomer I used. So I'm going to put it in the little dish that I used. I can't believe I actually was able to find some things that I actually did use back then. I mean, I can't believe I found the polish. That's unbelievable. And we both had, I'm trying to get the big hair and I'm trying to keep it, you know, so it stays up. I think cameraman, it was kind of a battle between the two of us who had the bigger hair. Oh. <laughs> you had a lot of hair. <laughs> you still have a lot of hair, but great hair. Okay. So I've got my competition white. Now in the old days, this is old school French nails. We would lay down the white first and then we would put the pink on. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do them exactly how we did them. These are the forms that we had. I mean, I didn't know any different, so I love them. I'm going to just put some primer on. This is the exact primer that I used to use too. Let me get my glasses. This is like back in time for me. Now, if when I did another back in time video, what, what did we call that one? It was, it was remember jewelry? We went back in time. Remember that one? Yeah. Oh gosh. I forget what it was <laughs> called, but when we did that one, you know, I had to, you know, really kind of find stuff to put in there and make sure that I was getting it kind of retro and be accurate. But for the eighties, we didn't really have to research it. Did we care? <laughs> we just lived there. So we, we, I even had some of the stuff, which was awesome. Okay. So, now I've got the primer on and I'm going to form it. Now, one thing I do want to show you guys, look, this is the brush I used. I learned on a square brush. I loved it. I just loved it. I didn't have anything to compare it to. I didn't have all the options, right? So we just, we just made do and made nails with the stuff that we had. I've got these little lacy gloves on for the photo, but I thought I'd wear them for the video, but they're kind of in the way. Look at this little thing. Look how tiny it is. I think it's a riot. But it made great nails. I have no complaints using it. Okay. So I will form this little guy up. Now see the difference is we didn't pinch the forms back then. We just didn't. There was no form to pinch. Look, I guess I could, but I'm not going to do it that way because we just didn't do that. You can see this is even close to touching. It's so different. So interesting. And oh, I've got my forms out. I'm calling them the button. Look at the size difference. Look. <laughs> this is where forms have really changed. Look at the difference, eh? I mean, these forms, they look bigger, but they're actually the same size of all the other forms. I just took the width and then I just filled in. So you don't have those tabs. You have one big tab. But look at the difference. Oh my goodness. And there's only square guidelines, of course. You don't have the center hole that you have to take out. So different. Okay. I love all the choices that we have nowadays. I think it's awesome. But you know what? We made do with what we had and we made good nails. Okay, here we go. Oh, you know what I forgot, Caraman? I forgot a um paper towel. Oh yeah, okay, hold on. Do you mind grabbing me one? No. Thank you. And that's exactly what we used in the 80s, just a paper towel. I like the blue towels I use now, but this is good. Thank you. Now, cameraman, for cameraman in the 80s, for me, it was fashion and uh, nails. For cameraman, it was music. It was, and 80s was huge for music, you know, Michael Jackson from Madonna, U2 and, and Prince, oh, one of my favorites. Um, so for him, it was music. So we have a couple of guitars back there. Those are Caraman's guitars. And I threw in a couple of VHS tapes because <laughs> that's the 80s for us. Okay. This is a brand new brush. So I'm just going to condition my brush with all the monomer. Now it is a different shape. I'm used to the uh, oval brushes now. I love my oval brush, but I love the square. I worked with the square brush for years. Okay, that's feeling pretty good. Okay, let's make some French nails. Okay, so I will get my brush nice and full of monomer, and then I would lay it in the competition white and Oh, this feels different. Now, I honestly don't know how old this powder is. It's been sitting around for a very long time. I actually went to 
my distributor to pick some up and they it's not even available it's and then I looked on their website I think I mentioned that before it's not I can't even buy it anymore so I may be the last one <laughs> if anybody else out there <laughs> has any competition um, I'd be curious okay so I'm already really wanting to pinch this because now I see why our nails were so wide <laughs> because the form was just fanning out look at that so I would use the edge of the brush to crisp up my French lines. Wow, is that wide. Yeah, that's just how we did it. It's really tough to stop that from fanning out, but that's what they looked like. That's what we did. Okay, so I just keep, you know, if I do it in one swoop, great. If I'm not happy with it 100%, then I will go in and add whatever I want. I do that with any thing. You know, when we first started, I believe the only color we had was natural and clear. And then, or maybe even pink, I'm not sure, but then white came in which was really nice when we had the white come in because now, of course, that was the birth of the pink and whites. Wow. I mean, it is really driving me crazy to not want to pinch this. But I now I see why they're so wide in that picture. And my French line was so straight across. It wasn't near as curvy as what I like now. Okay, well, okay, so look at that wide nail. Oh, that's driving me nuts. Beautiful. <laughs> so, Caravan, you're gonna have fun with this video because you can put a bunch of uh, 80s music, which was oh, yeah. right up your alley. You're hearing it already, yes. You're hearing it already? <laughs> yeah, they are. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean they're hearing it already. Yeah. I meant. The viewers yes. have already heard the music. <laughs> haven't put it in yet, but by I know, the time but they hear not, it, Well, we don't record with the music. No. You put it in after, but you'll yeah. be having fun with it. That's right. Okay, so now what's interesting, I'm going to put the pink in next, but this is how we used to do it. Now, this pink, I haven't even opened it. So I really don't know. I mean, you're not supposed to... It's supposed to have a shelf life, like, for how long it's been on the shelf, you're not supposed to use it past, but I mean, how many times have you eaten food that you shouldn't maybe pass the date, right? 36 months. Well, this is older than three years. I can bet you that it could be 10 years old. Okay. Oh, that's pretty. Now, warm pink and cool pink are what OPI offered at the time. I preferred the cool pink. Um, that may be why I don't have any. <laughs> because I was using it. The warm pink was pretty, but it wasn't my favorite. I preferred the more cool. And sometimes, I, that's where I got the idea of combining the two because I found the warm was too warm and the cool sometimes was just a little too translucent, too cool. So I sometimes would mix them and I still do that today with colors, but I couldn't find any cool pink. So I'm just gonna use the warm pink right out of the jar. pretty okay now when I did the pink because we didn't do the reverse method we were so busy trying to perfect this nobody even thought of it <laughs> we didn't even didn't even so the trick with it is you did not want your pink to cross over the white we called it shadowing. We used to make words up for what we were doing because they weren't invented yet. So we would make sure that you don't bring the pink over top. And, you know, it's, you know, sometimes it's a little time consuming not to do that, but it's advantageous not to because when you do it, it causes a funny color. It makes your white look not so crisp, not so white, right? It takes that sharp line away. This is not a jacket that I had in the 80s. If I had, if it would have been pink. And if I kept it, it would have been 
here. I'd be wearing it, but I went and bought this one. It's something I could find that was close to something that I thought was in the 80s. Caraman, you do have a black leather jacket, but I believe that was more 70s. So I couldn't wear that one. Yeah. Uh, also, too, I probably I couldn't fit that. into it. Yeah, either early 80s, late 70s. I don't know. Okay, so now we would put in the white then we put in the pink and then we would now, again, they don't have any clear OPI anymore. I could not find that. So I am just going to use my clear. What I did learn when you're putting in clear is when you're using the UV inhibitors with the monomer, which is very common nowadays. And I have to say back in the eighties, when I used this, no MMA, they were very up to date. I've never worked with MMA. So that's never been a part of my history, but I would uh, make sure that the clear is this is where I really perfected my liquid to powder ratio. Putting in the white really helped me because you can't have that runny. It does not work. And you work with a drier brush. But making sure that your liquid to powder ratio is perfect on the clear capping because if you have too much monomer, it will turn it kind of, well, this UV, you have too much in it. So it turns it kind of gray. So when you put that bead down, when you, this is really applies to today as well. If you have too much monomer in your clear capping bead, it will be kind of gray. And if you're putting it over white, it can really show up. So that's something else you didn't want to do. So I would make sure that I would have the bead that was very uh, good consistency, good liquid to powder and on the drier side. But I would place that bead in the apex arch area, making sure it goes right to the sides. And I'm sort of filling in the difference between that little groove there where the pink meets the white filling that in. And then I'm just taking it over top of the whole nail right to the end. And that's how we did our French nails. Look at that wide nail. So then somewhere along the line, somebody learned that you could pinch it. And this is far too late to pinch that white. I forgot about that actually. So we would just pinch it with her fingers or then they invented pin pinching tongs, but that came into the nineties. That was a little bit, you know, more into the nineties. That is the nail that we made. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rest and then I'm going to shape them. I'm going to give you a little tip on the shaping that we used to do and how we've come so far in our tools with shaping between files and of course the e-files makes a big difference. Okay, let's pink and white and 80s style the rest of the nails. Okay, I've applied everything and it's all I could do not to pinch it. But like I say, that was more of a 90s thing. So I'm not going to pinch them. I'm going to leave them. I'm just going to take these little forms off. The forms held out pretty good. I didn't have any problem with them. That's what I've learned that we did. I mean, we just made products better and better and better. Um, we made do with these forms. But now we've got better forms out there. But it reminds me, I just wanted to mention, if anybody's looking for my brush and file kits, my... I got a new beautiful brush and it's back in and the new gold one's in too if you don't want to buy the collection. Okay, I am going to file these and I'm going to make them quite square. I loved square nails and I perfected that square shape. So in the 80s, when we filed, um, we of course used this, but I'm going to use this e-file because this doesn't work. And I'm going to use the hand file. Now we only had black files which is nothing wrong with them. They worked great. But sometimes, especially if you're not experienced, you sometimes, or if the product's not so great, we would get little bubbles. And when you're filing, it may not happen today, and it might, when you're filing, you might cut that bubble that might be in the product in half, and then the black uh, grit from the uh, file would settle in that little hole and you'd end up sometimes with tiny little black dots and I'm not saying all the time every once in a while you get a black dot in there and you're like what <laughs> one of the reasons why I guess I made my uh, files wanting to be white I really like the whiter color okay so then we just filed them up now back in the day we did have this arbor band but ours was twice as big it was a very big band and it was the same grits that you could get, but it did take a lot longer to file them. But nowadays, of course, a lot of people are developing these carbide bits and things like that that we don't have to. Uh, it takes as long. We can just file right through them. Okay, so I'm just going to start filing these. 
and getting my nice sharp square, which I just loved to do. I fell in love with that. You know, honestly, you guys, when I first started doing nails, it took me six hours to do my first set of nails. I never heard about nails before. Um, I was working in retail when I in the 80s when I saw an ad for nails and I applied for it and I got it. So I'd never heard anything about it. Went to the salon, took me six hours to do my first set. I think I did it that weekend. Brought a model in, but I didn't like the, um, the square shape. I really didn't like it at all. I thought it was very foreign, very odd, but I ended up loving it and I wore it for years. But I perfected, I'd love to make it super, 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 super square. I would call it sharp square. And when I say square, it was square. Is that what you're going to do now? Huh? Yeah. Sharp square? Cool. Yeah. Super sharp square. So how did you find using the old product versus what you oh, use Oh, right. The old, old stuff. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I forgot. I didn't even know there was any difference. Isn't that interesting, eh? They said it was only good for like three years, but yet I probably bought that at least five years ago. It could have been 10. I mean, that jar could have been sitting around for 20. <laughs> wow. Uh-huh. But let's safely say at least five, and it said it was only good for three. I wonder if it'll cure properly. I didn't see any old. problem. Look at it. Hmm. Looks fine, but look at those 80s nails. Look at those things. Wow. 80s is coming back. I bet this is the new look. I hope so. I want leg warmers to come back. <laughs> yeah. Loved leg warmers. They're so cute. I mean, back in the day, we would wear these jackets, this style of jacket. I wouldn't wear the black leather, but because I couldn't afford it. <laughs> and we would wear them with a little bralette, but I wasn't going to do that now. <laughs> but we had a lot of lace, and you can see the lace on the hands and stuff, so I made sure I got those for you. But my hair, I think it's flattening, Caraman. Is it? It's going into the it's 90s big, now. It's Look not at as it. big as it was. It's not earlier. as big. No. <laughs> you didn't use enough hairspray. Oh, man. We used to use so much hairspray. I was afraid when we went to concerts and stuff, because back then people smoked, right? I was mm. afraid somebody would flick their Ignite. cigarette into my hair. <laughs> so you can see there was a lot of filing we did in the 80s because, I mean, that's how we did the nails. We weren't as precision in putting it on. We kind of, I mean, we were with the white. We were a little bit more careful, but then we kind of put the stuff on and then we just sculpted it all off. Nowadays, we're a little bit more precise with everything, our forming. I mean, our tools have gotten better. Now, interesting enough, when we uh, filled these, the client used to come in and want to fill. And naturally, we would take our bit and we, we would do it with this. Could you guys imagine? Those of you who are doing fills and you've done a pink and white fill, can you imagine doing it with this bit? I mean, it left such a fuzzy edge, right? <laughs> you couldn't get those super crisp, sharp um, edges that we do today with this thing. I mean, we managed. Mm -hmm. It's funny how things change. Well, yeah. Music's changed dramatically, too. Yes, think about I mean, music, right? Yeah. 80s has been, you know, synthesized music became popular. Like, yeah, that was that was yeah. your era for Syndromes. music, 80s and yeah. 70s and 80s, 80s, I guess, eh? We had synthesizers in the 70s. And right. the 60s, too, I think some really basic analog ones. I and mean, we were just kids. Like I say, in the 80s, I was 16 in 1980. So it, it was just, you know, it was just a great, fun, young. We were really young at that time. Boy, it goes by fast. I know it's corny. All people say it to you all the time, but you guys, it's true. <laughs> Don't blink. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and file these up and then I'm gonna show you how we finish them. Very different than today. Okay, so I've shaped them all up and I actually filed the whole hand with this bit and these hand files. I did not use any carbide bits at all. So I do this to this day. I still go over top of the whole nail back and forth like this with the arbor band, it just seems, I've skipped it before, and it just seems like it gives a really smooth finish. I just don't think the nail finishes nicely without it. 
And then once I go over all that, then I would, this is what we did back in the 80s. We would get a buffing block and we would smooth it over. Or you could get um, this bit here, which I'm not a fan of. This one here, it's supposed to be a diamond dust, but all those, this, I'm not so sure this one is. And you buff it over, but I never really found it to be that effective. So I would just buff it over with one of these really gentle buff blocks. Now, the thing is, you do have to do this nice and smooth because the next step we're going to do is polish. Now, today, in modern times, we then would finish it with the upper band and then we would dust it off and then we would do a gel top coat. Gel, hard gel nails, let alone gel top coats, gel colors. We didn't have any of that stuff. None of it. So we finished everything with nail polish. And honest, I love nail polish. I had to really wrap my head around putting gel uh, finish coat on already acrylic or already hard gel nails. It was developed more of a natural nail thing and people are using it on acrylic too, but I never found it to be necessary because nail polish wore so well on acrylic or uh, gel nails. It did not have any problem. It would last from appointment to appointment. So four or five weeks, it would, it would grow out from the cuticle just as gel would. But I found the longevity on fake nails, you might say, polish lasted the whole time. So I'm a huge fan of nail polish. I love nail polish. So I would just smooth this over nice and smooth. And as you can see, I did get them as square as possible. And yes, they were wider. You could see the forms were kind of pushing it out wide, but I shaped them so we had sort of more of a very, very square symmetrical look, but not wide. I didn't want that look. And I remember trying to perfect that over the years. And then when the pinching came in, it looked a little bit better. And when the forms, stiffer forms came in, of course, we could really pinch a form. So now the next step would be, surprisingly, would be oil right? Before we put nail polish on, we would put oil on. And back in the day, we didn't have beautiful oils like this one. We would literally get baby oil and we would put perfume in it. <laughs> just so our oil would smell nice. And we would just dab it on, massage it in for the client. That's one step that we hasn't really changed. We still do that today. But you just don't do it before gel nail polish. You do it before nail polish. So you massage it in, then the client would go wash their hand. And I'm gonna go do that right now. And I'm gonna come back and we're gonna check this polish out. Okay, I'm not gonna color them this color. I'm gonna use a softer shade, but I just wanna check this out. I, I'm so glad I actually found these. I can't believe I hung on to them for pl 30 plus years. That's I've had incredible. this polish. It is incredible. Now I will say, I put it on this hand and we wait, remember we were fussing around with the earring and trying to get it in yeah. and I gunked it. So it, and I'm impatient, but it may not have dried, but it may not have dried because it is so old. That might be, and it did dry with kind of a dull finish a little bit. So that could be, but this was our favorite color at the time. It's called Bing Cherry and it was super, super popular. So I have opened it and I know what the quality of it is like. I just haven't put it on a nail yet. So I am dying to show you. I'm just going to put it on one finger, but I'm going to take it off. Look at this. Look at that. That is not perfect, but it's not bad. For 30 plus years in a wow. drawer? Really? I would have thought it had been all dried up. And I would have thought so too. So clearly I had the lid on tight enough, but that was our favorite color, I have to say. It was super, super popular. But look how gorgeous that went on. I cannot believe it. And of course, two coats. It was like a, a, a blood red, which we just loved. Amazing. Unbelievable after 30 years. Okay, so in the 80s, I would do the French and then I would pick a very, very, very soft shade. I'm going to try this one, OPI. And um, I would just pick a soft shade and put it over top. You can see it's almost a clear. It just has a very, very soft finish to it. That's awfully pretty. I love that, but I like this one too. I love polish. I can't tell you how much I love polish. I actually really miss not putting polish on. I got really quick at it. It goes on much faster than gel. And it, oh, 
that's good. Anyway, I'm going to pick one of those two. I'm going to finish it off. And I think we should take a look at the reveal shots of my 1980s-ish nails. For those of you who want my crystal dish, they're back in stock. Just wanted to mention that in case anybody was looking. Well, the 80s for us was a great time. We got married in the 80s. We started our businesses in the 80s. Mm -hmm. um, what else did we do in the 80s? Great music, and I'm sure Caraman had fun with the music in this video. I hope you did too. And as you can see, the nails weren't so bad in the 80s. They're beautiful. In fact, it kind of started this whole movement with nails and now is turned out to be a 40-year career for me, which I am ever so grateful. Caraman and I love this job. And the products have really come a long way. I think we made beautiful nails and the products have just made our nails, we can make them easier with the products and so much more choices. That's really what we have now. Anyway, I had fun in this video. If you wanna join me for another trip back in time, probably about late 1800s, I sort of imagined what nails might be like then. Check this out.